So this crazy year of 2020 is drawing to a close and we're looking forward to a brand new year. So what's ahead for us in 2021? Well, we just went through this incredible shift at the, uh, the uh, winter solstice of 2020, which a lot of people are feeling, myself included, that we're actually entering into the age of Aquarius, okay? And so, of course, the age of Aquarius is, you know, it has been pretty hyped up. But if this is really a birthing, we're birthing the new earth. And if you have ever been a parent or have been around newborns, you know that it's not always easy those first few, you know, that first little time. Um, and so let's kind of look forward at the energies of 2021 and not just 2021, but the next few years I'm feeling is going to have very similar energies to it. So in this video, I'm going to share just kind of what I've been given to relay about these new earth energies, these very baby newborn <laughs> new earth energies that we're all moving through right now. And um, sharing some artwork that has uh, got messages in it about it, and also a constellation of spirit animals, especially revolving about around one specific spirit animal that I think has a lot to say about, um, you know, can help us to guide through this time. Um, so join me here and let's move into it. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Ona, and I am a visionary artist and energy worker and I do work a lot with the spirit animal world so uh, join me for this and I guess before we go into um, the spirit animal aspect of this I just wanted to share something that I went into my journal and I work with the Akashic Guides and asked specifically for guidance around the energies of 2021. And the first thing they gave me was this image here, and I blew it up here <laughs> so you can see it, but it's uh, this human image with um, it's kind of like a hexagonal shield. And then they gave me a, a pretty interesting message that I'm just going to read to you. And I think in a future video very soon, I will release a video more about the meaning of that shield and why that's important. But here's the first thing they said for humanity. These are the energies of a lifetime. So this is really, really a momentous time right now. Something to pay attention to. And they're telling me that 2021 represents a trifold split in humanity here. And three energies that we're working with for humanity. One is the energy of despair. One is the energy of longing, and one is the energy of action. And they explained this. They told me that those who have already realized their divinity, that is their true identity, they will be cleared for action. So if you feel like you really know who you are and that you've worked through a, you know, a, a lot of your, your, you've been through all your dark nights of the soul, you may be looking at a very action-filled year ahead. And also I'm getting, if you um, watch my last video at the end of it, um, there may be a lot of prosperity in store for you this year. Um, so those who have already realized their divinity, their true identity, will be cleared for action. Those who have not will be torn, they say, between despair and longing. Okay, so this may not be the easiest year, okay? We just came out of an interesting, very, very uh, challenging year for many. And it looks like this may also be challenging for a large portion of humanity as well. Um, this is not to worry, though, okay? It, it, it's all going to come out <laughs> fine, but this is sort of a warning. Um, those who have not already realized their divinity will be torn between despair and longing. Those who choose despair will succumb to darkness, but those who choose longing will suffer, will suffer, and through suffering find freedom, okay? So this is really a matter of free will choice, and if you are in the point of your journey where you're still really in this... Um, phase of finding your true identity, then know that as long as you are choosing the longing for spirit, the longing to connect with spirit, and consciously choosing this over the energies of despair, you're going to be fine. You're going to find freedom, okay? And so the more you can really connect with that, you know, that longing for the divine. Um, they say there's no ways around it. We must go through it. And 
I think um, this this does not mean like this this really is not such a dark message that it sounds even though there's a lot of darkness that we're working through and I think the messages the spirit animals are going to really help to clarify this message from spirit here around 2021 um, so let's let's move on to that um, I had a viewer recently who mentioned that Snake was coming forward for them personally as the spirit animal of 2021. And this is something I've noticed as well. You've probably noticed if you've been following me, I've mentioned Snake quite a lot. Um, so Snake and uh, its relationship with a certain other spirit animals, including Eagle and Horse, I feel holds the key to understanding of much as what is happening on the planet right now. So I'm going to share a couple of paintings in progress that are that are related to Snake. Um, and I had thought originally that these were going to be solstice paintings, and they kind of were, because um, they're addressing this whole energy, but it's really talking about the shifting into the new earth. And so I was intending to have these paintings finished by the solstice, and they just didn't, didn't, didn't happen. And so when I asked about that, they said, because it's, these are really energies that are going to be talking, moving us through the next few years. Um, we've got this bifurcation happening, the old world splitting from the new world, right? The, the new world, uh, the new earth kind of splitting up, the old earth falling away. And um, this is a birthing that's happening. And um, like I mentioned, you can look at my Solstice Owl video for a little bit more about that. Um, but before we move into it, let's I want to just recap snake energy a little bit so that we're all on the same page. If you like, I'm also going to link to my snake video so that you can uh, go more in depth with this amazing spirit animal if you'd like. Um, but like all spirit animals, uh, spirit animals are actually neutral spirits, okay? So they've got both positive and negative um, aspects to them. And when we work with them, they help us by, first of all, they can show us the negative, right? Because sometimes the negative, we don't want to see it. The ego doesn't want to see it. So spirit animals are great at bringing that forward so that we can actually see it because when you, once you are able to be aware of it, that's when you can work on these energies and transmute them, turn them positive, okay? And then the positive aspect of the spirit animal, um, it, it can be real helper spirit, okay? So when you're connecting with a spirit animal, you can intend to really connect with that positive and ask it to be your helper, helper because they, they really will. Um, so positive aspects of snake. The, the snake is like this, it, it represents the basic instincts. This is neutral aspects actually. Basic instincts, um, survival, uh, the sexual energy, and it really correlates with these lower chakras, the lower three chakras, if you're using the traditional chakra system of energy. They're also really connected with earth energy, okay? And so the really positive aspect, um, if we can put that label on it, um, what I mean by that is the life enhancing aspect of the snake is, um, you can look at it as a life force, okay? If you think of the snake as a very pared down creature, life force energy moving through it, and we think of the kundalini, okay? Regeneration, big one. Regeneration, healing, they are amazing healer animals. Um, rebirth, if you think the shedding and the, the, the kind of that whole regeneration, rebirth, Christ consciousness, which is connected with that, and the receiving of light, which is also the receiving of life. If you think of a snake and, and it's lying out in the sun and just soaking in those rays, okay? These are all very positive aspects of snake. Snake is such a powerful life force uh, symbol that its shadow side represents death, okay? So that's where we get, um, if you are, like you may have noticed that a, a a lot of people who are into the dark magic are really into snakes, okay? And this is why, because if you turn the, the positive snake energy backwards, it's going to be the death agenda, okay? And so we have to be very, very aware of this when working with snake energies. And we can we transmute it one way or the other, okay? So just be being aware of this. Um, so on its negative side, the life disabling aspect of snake is uh, we're looking at death. We're looking at degeneration, paralysis, right? Because life force is like this forward moving, um, the negative aspect can be very paralyzing. Untruth or lies, like speaking with a forked tongue, undermining and sabotage, uh, treason, right? Uh, snake in the grass. 
So all these kind of very manipulative, uh, sneaky, uh, venomous, that kind of energy, um, you know, and outright death. So the death aspect of snake comes in two ways. One is the very overt, striking kind of death, right? We know that. Um, but then the, the undermining kind is the covert death. And this actually, if you're thinking overt, covert narcissism, there, yes, there is a, a connection with that. And these are patterns that um, if you, and, and I'm talking especially about the narcissistic patterns, things like the, um, the, the hero savior complex, the uh, victim, right? The victim victimizer complex. Some of these things that, that move in um, that are connected with narcissism or other kind of uh, relationships gone wrong kind of things that you may have experienced. You, I'm going to challenge you to, if you're familiar with some of those patterns in relationships, to start looking at the, the, the larger patterns of society at large and see if you can't see some of these relationships mirroring, you know, we know the concept as above so below. We're going to be seeing this, you know, especially playing out in the next few years. I mean, we already have. <laughs> but um, so this is a painting here and I call it warning. And th so the snakes in the painting here, these are the four types of snakes that uh, the venomous snakes that are native to North America where I live. And these are the rattlesnake. And this happens to be a Western Diamondback, um, the Copperhead, the uh, Water Moccasin, and the Coral Snake. And this is really, um, to me, these are speaking to aspects of consciousness that are really not friendly, that are actually part of the death agenda or the anti-life consciousness on Earth. Okay, so these, this, in this particular instance, the snake is really representing kind of dark energies that we need to be aware of. And um, being in, there's four of them and in all four corners. So we think of the, like the four corners of the world. This is really speaking to me of, you know, just really pervasive uh, throughout, throughout the, the planet and also specifically North America as well. Um, also, they're spanning both water, land, and sky, and to me, that's really talking about the, the toxicity, right? Um, and both physically, literally on the earth, we've got, um, y you know, the, the, the toxins that are actually, <laughs> that we are actually drenching the earth with toxins, as well as uh, spiritually and psychically, just uh, toxic energies um, that, are, are really, it's really difficult to get away from them at all. Okay, so to me, here's Mother Earth, and she is issuing this choice, and she's saying that, you know, that it's going to have to be a conscious choice here to, uh, that we need to be aware of what's going on and also to act. She's got this falcon on her shoulder. Um, and then the other element that the other animal here that's well there's two other animals here that are both birds um, the falcon which is really a creature of vision right and it's also extremely um, decisive right so it's really asking for decisive action um, and then we've got the vulture which is um, it's solar energy. Now you think of vulture also as a creature of death, but the vulture has, uh, it's, it's really in, in um, you know, if you really feel into that bird, it's about purification, right? In nature, it is a purifier. The vulture takes death and it actually transmutes it, okay? And so especially in this one where it's, it's actually the vulture and the sun have become one. Um, we're looking at some real times of purification that we are in right now and that we're going to be increasingly seeing okay a cleansing purification and you know if you've been through any kind of dark night of the soul you know that what that means that it can be a challenging time but that it is um also you know cleansing purifying it's necessary it's necessary things to happen um and so this is you know a, a, a do not do not fear a fear not kind of moment that we have to realize that you know what's happening now is 
playing out due to, you know, it, it, it just a necessary uh, a, a change in, in um, you know, what's happening on the earth, that, that we will move through it. And this is actually a healing kind of um, time that we're, that we're doing. It's a time of great purification here on Mother Earth, right? Um, birds, there's a lot about birds coming forward. And um, birds, I, I don't know a huge amount the, the, about this, but there's a, um, you hear about the bird tribe, and which is associated with the Pleiadians, right? And here to help humanity. And so I, the, the other animals that are coming forward a lot are all birds, not all birds, there's horse too, which I'll get to in a bit, but um, so these are two of the birds. And then the other one is the eagle here. And this is uh, actually a pretty big painting here that I did right around the solstice just before. And here's, and I, I think it's still in progress here, but um, what we've got is a couple eagles and the eagle is grasping the snake. We've got this lightning coming down and it's hitting the earth here. And what this really brought forward to my mind was the lightning itself. This is an act of creation, right? It's the energy, the new energy coming down. And if you think about how life evolved on earth, you know, or at least how we're told it evolved, um, there was energy that just kind of came down to earth and it created this organic, you know, turned from inorganic into organic, the creation of the beginning of life, right? So what we're looking at right now is the end of a great cycle and going back a little bit to some of the energies, it's reflecting some of the energies of the very beginning of life, right? Um, and so we, everything goes in cycles, right? And in, in our own lives, we have cycles where we return, right? And the, the patterns kind of repeat themselves, and then we have a chance to redo things. And so we are at this literally birthing of a new earth, and so the eagle comes in, and first of all, it's this is a golden eagle, okay? So it, it really has this connection with the sun and with the light. And of course, the sun showed up in both paintings here. Um, but the eagle itself is really connected with the higher, higher perspective, and it's a very connected with the Creator, connected with God, with the divine. And I've always seen it, for me personally, it's been a divine way shower. So where when eagle shows up, I know I'm on the path. Um, it's also kind of like a heavenly warrior kind of, kind of spirit. And so eagle showing up, I feel, is a really, really, really positive sign. And you see he's got the eagle in his talons. And there are um, some eagles that actually do eat snakes. And so eagle and snake are one of these predator-prey relationships that are um, really great to work with in, in, uh, when we work with spirit animals, okay? And I, I also want to kind of tell you about this progression of Scorpio energy, okay? Because Scorpio is the sign of the zodiac that's associated with procreation, right, with the sex act, and also with death, okay? So the death life spectrum. And that's exactly what's going on right now. We've got this, if you want to look at it, this battle between, like we've been in the sort of birthing room of birthing a new earth, but then we've also got this um, polarity and this battle between uh, dark and light, right? Or between the, uh, the life energies and the anti-life energies. Okay, and so this energy of Scorpio is kind of pervading this whole thing. Um, and my dear friend and mentor, uh, Jennifer Mizell, um, kind of brought this to my attention that there's a progression of animal symbols within the, that, that um, sign of Scorpio. And it begins with scorpion, which is the, it represents the deepest level of instinct, right? The fears, the, it's kind of this earth dweller, it hides away in the shadows. And when we progress um, to the next level after scorpion, that it, it kind of transmutes into snake. 
and there's where we're activating this procreation, the sexual energy, the power to create, to create life or to create death, right? And so that's where you get this whole snake symbolism that we've just uh, recently, you know, just been covering. Um, then the next phase of the progression is really interesting. It moves on to eagle, okay? And because the eagle and the snake do have a connection, they both have this very um, kind of, you know, they're both predators. And but this, the eagle is like this next step in transmuting um, that snake energy. And it, what it does is it brings it from earth to up to sky, right? And so we're we're moving, we're shifting the. Um, we're shifting from a material to a spiritual plane, and that's what's happening on the earth here, okay? With this eagle consuming the snake, right? It's a transmutation. And then the last in the, in the cycle is the phoenix, which is basically kind of eagle energy that's, that's stepped up a little bit, and that, that completes the circle of the, the life and death circle, okay? So the thing to remember is that the eagle and the snake aren't enemies, okay? They depend on each other, the species depend on each other. And so what this tells us, what we can learn from this, is that death, in its rightful place, death, death when it's in its rightful place in the circle of life is a supporter of life, okay? So it's really easy, I, I, I think a lot of what's gone a, a, you know, astray in our, our cultural kind of spiritual understanding is this fear of death has crept in. And if we really understand death as a part of life, as what it is, is that we as souls are always one with Creator, and so that the soul, the really inner part of ourselves, is never going to die. The body dies and falls away, but then it's like, it's that that's just part of the cycle, right? So the soul we can see as part of like, just sort of like the sun, it's always there behind the clouds, right? And this eagle is like swooping in and it's showing us that behind all the clouds and all the stuff, there's always light, there's always light. Um, so overcoming the fear of death really is going to be helping to bring balance back to earth to bring us back to the, the path of life, right? But we have to learn to accept death and to actually make friends with it in a way in order to overcome the fear of it, uh, you know, and, and to bring it back into its rightful place as a, a, a supporter of life because death really is there to support life. And so part of helping to... to kind of move through and overcome the fear of death is to recognize that you can't destroy energy. That's a, a law of physics. You can't destroy energy. The energy can move and it can change shape. Okay, so when the eagle eats the snake, it's a transmutation. Okay, he does not destroy the snake. The snake now becomes the eagle. And so it's victory not through destruction and not through banishing but through incorporation and transmutation and bringing it to a higher level, raising the expectations, raising the consciousness. So this is what we're working with right now. And in each of our own personal lives, we're going to be asked to, you know, come to terms with a lot of these things. Like within ourselves, there's going to be, we're going to be seeing death in many, many ways, both literal and symbolic. Okay, and so part of really transmuting this is to learn to accept, you know, accept what's happening and to understand the eternal within the material, right? To be, you know, uh, to bring in our ego selves, right? That understands that the light is always there right? And to transmute. We all have this little snake energy within us, right? This little, you know, um, the base fears, the, the little instincts. And and that's not bad. Um, 
I'm studying Kundalini yoga, and they've got this beautiful um, this kriya of ten bodies that I'm doing, and the ten, ten bodies. We've got one soul body, right, and that's the eternal. And then we've got, they say, th um, three mental bodies and then six energetic bodies. So the three mental bodies are the neutral body, the negative, okay, the neutral mind, the negative mind, and the positive mind. And uh, maybe maybe I'll make a video about that sometime. But the negative mind is there actually to protect us and to show us, you know, where the danger is. It's just when it gets overblown and we start identifying with it, that's that's when the problem is. Okay, so um, if you've enjoyed this video, I encourage you to um, subscribe and to hit that bell for notifications because I've got a few videos coming up that expand upon what we touched upon here. Okay, so the next few videos are going to include, um, I'm going to be doing a, um, a spirit meaning of eagle. And this may not be in the same order, <laughs> but I will also be doing a further explanation of the energies of 2021, including that image that I showed you at the, the very beginning and the meaning of that hexagon shape. Um, we're going to be exploring Venom as I finish uh, this painting here, the, the, the warning one. We're going to be looking, delving into the meaning of Venom. I'm also working on a bee spirit animal deck, and I'm going to be doing the Venom card about that. So Venom is something that comes forward sometimes when we work with spirit animals. We're going to be looking at the meaning of that and how it pertains to kind of some of the life patterns that you may be seeing, which is going to give us some clues as to how to work with venomous situations and clearing toxic energies. And finally, we're going to look at horses because horses have a very unique relationship with the, the, the venomous snakes. And we're going to see how horse spirit can help us to overcome toxic energies, right, that are, the, that are represented by these snakes. So um, looking forward to those. And if that's uh, something that you would like to um, be part of, I would welcome you as, uh, as a viewer hit that subscribe button. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you again soon. And I almost forgot one more upcoming video and that's going to be my annual spirit animal reading for the entire year of 2021. And I'm thinking about doing that as a live stream. So if I'd love to hear from you, actually, if you, if you would prefer a live stream, put that in the comments below and, um, Anyway, that will be, I will be uploading that within the next three days. So look for that soon.